الحمد لله وكفى والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وقلنا يا ادم اسكن انت وزوجك الجنه وكلا منها رغدا حيث شئتما ولا تقربا هذه الشجره فتكونا من الظالمين فازلهما الشيطان انها فاخرجهما مما كان فيه قل نهبتوا بعضكم لبعض عدو ولكم في الارض مستقر ومتاع الى حين سبحان ربك رب العزه اما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم So if you look through the schedule you'll see that the topic for a series of either four or five lectures which we'll have together is the wahi and I thought that this was an important topic because often we don't appreciate what wahi truly is wahi is an arabic word which means to inspire secretly or to reveal and we'll go into more details throughout the next several hours over the next few days but i really felt that often we don't appreciate what wahi truly is and what a great blessing allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon us so for the next series inshallah we'll be talking about the wahi and before we begin wahi i think there is some important background So our gathering even the short gathering over the next few days this is just a short meeting in a waiting room called life actually this is just a waiting room each of us is scheduled to depart at a certain time we don't know what ticket we hold in hand but over time each of us will depart onto the next leg of the journey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was initially completely alone. Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala had not created the universe, he had not created uh, any of creation. And Allah was supreme at that point and he was from the beginning till the end and will always remain supreme. But at that point there was only Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala in his infinite mercy in order to share his mercy, in order to expose further expose his mercy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the creation. Then beyond that, he blessed us to me to be among the best of the created. And I think we don't even realize this simple point or we haven't thought about this simple point enough. And so let's take a little a couple steps back and think about what happened when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created. So initially there was Allah alone. There was no creation whatsoever. And Allah in his infinite mercy decided to create. That's enormous. In and of itself that act in and of itself is enormous that Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala made the decision to create so that he could bestow his mercy upon creation. So if you look at the paradigm or the flow chart of our existence, it all began with that moment in which Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala as only Allah could have done decided to create something called creation. Now, within that creation Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala created the sun, the universe, the moon, us, animals, trees, animate objects, inanimate objects. And so Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us that we ended up at the pinnacle of all of creation. So think about it. We could have been once Allah decided to create my essence could have been created as an inanimate object. I could have been made a rock somewhere, left in a forest, and that would have been my existence. Allah could have decided that. Allah created those as well. I could have been a tree somewhere. I could have been a mountain. I could have been created a dog. Allah there was nothing to bind Allah to create me as a human being. So the mere fact that Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala created us as human beings is an enormous blessing. There were so many options out there. Of all of creation, there are billions and billions of types of creation. There was a one in a billion chance or perhaps even 
a, a lower probability that we would have been created as human beings but Allah blessed us and created us as human beings. That's an enormous blessing. We don't even reflect on it. The next time you look at an animal or you see a fly or you see something that's inanimate, think that Allah could have created you as that. But instead, He blessed us with being humans. Then, beyond that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala among humanity has created a group of human beings who will obey Him and another group of human beings that will disobey Him or at least make that effort. And Allah, by His infinite mercy, created us from among the group of human beings that seek to obey Him. Think of the countless people that have been created that sought to disobey Allah and imagine their end result. But Allah, in His infinite mercy, He made us from, not from that group, from another group of people who seek to please their Lord, who seek to gain nearness to their Lord, who seek to do good in this world so that may they, they may attain something in the hereafter. That's an enormous blessing. SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah, think about it. We didn't choose to be Muslim. We didn't do anybody a favor. Allah did us a favor by creating us and then creating us as human beings and then when deciding which side of humanity we would be on, He put us through His infinite mercy, through nothing of our doing, He put us on the side of people who would seek to please their Lord. What if we were on the other side? They don't know many times these people. They are, they're missing everything. Their life has no purpose. Imagine how depressing it would be in this world and imagine the result in the hereafter. SubhanAllah, that's a great blessing. If we stopped here and finished the conference on this point and began to thank Allah from now until the end of time, we would never be able to thank Allah enough for making us among those people who seek to attain nearness to Him. Then beyond that, among the countless groups of people that have come throughout the history of mankind who sought nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah created us from a group of people that belong to the Ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah. You look in hadith and you find that every single prophet, not the people of the Prophet's Ummahs, every single prophet, when they saw the blessings that were to be bestowed upon the Ummah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, each of them individually made a dua, Ya Allah, make me from that, among that Ummah. Prophets, not the follower of the Prophets. The Prophets made this dua. And for none of the Prophets was this dua accepted, except Isa alayhi salam, who when he is resurrected, will return as an ummati of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed this blessing upon us. Where can we begin to thank Him? That among creation, He created us as human beings and not animals. And among, hum among human beings, He created us among those who obey Him and seek to obey Him. And then among those people from his, who are obedient to Him, He created us from among the Ummah of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, And that Ummah will shine on the Day of Judgment because of the wudu that they perform and the salah that they perform and all the unique blessings that have been bestowed upon our Ummah. All the great things, if you look through a hadith, and that's not the purpose of this particular discussion, but if you look through a hadith, you'll find over and over and over again countless enumerations of the blessings that were bestowed upon this ummah. SubhanAllah, there's nothing more you can ask for. Allah has given us everything. If you had to sit down and map out where you would like to fall on the map of creation, and you wanted to pick that individual point where we are today, you couldn't have chosen a better situation. You could not have chosen a better situation. And on top of that, Allah has given us health. He's given us wealth. He's given us time. He's given us sanity. He's given us every single thing in the world. And the only thing He's asked is that we thank Him and that we worship Him and that we call other people to do the same. Such a small price for such an enormous blessing. SubhanAllah can't begin to thank. You cannot begin to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let the world from the beginning of creation to the end bow to him and it does not change the greatness of Allah. He is wara al wara al wara above and beyond anything you can comprehend. That's Allah and his blessings are infinite upon us. SubhanAllah. The health that we have, come and see the sick. The wealth that we have, Take a trip and visit the poor. 
the time that we have, look at the people busy in the dunya, chasing their lives and trying to make ends meet. Allah created us with all of these great faculties and all we have to do is worship him five times a day and call others to do the same. Very, very simple. Such a small price. How foolish we are that we don't even offer this much in return for what Allah has bestowed upon us.